Okay, list of people who weren't alive during the 80s. Me and these guys. This is the cast of the 2023 film Woodbridge, a teen drama written, directed, and produced by this guy who was alive in the 80s, Stephen Meyer. Woodbridge is an attempt at an 80s teen coming of age film that would work 10 times better if it didn't take place in the 80s. Because other than the opening shot that indicates that we're in the year 1988, everything in this film looks, sounds, and and feels like it happened yesterday. As I understand it, most if not all of the people in this film are influencers of some sort. Um, I only recognize these two people. No one else, sorry. That being said, some of us may have some personal opinions or, or feelings about some of these influencers, but today I ask you to divorce yourself from that mindset for two reasons. Uh, number one, it's a critique, it's a review. I, I feel like we forget that's a normal thing sometimes. But number two, it's not on the actors at all. It is completely on the guy who made a movie so poor and so unrelated to the 80s that it feels like it was made by an alien who's trying to convince you that they grew up in the 80s uh, and also that they aren't an alien. So this film is allegedly based on a true story, which I don't really know if I buy considering just how little we learn about each character throughout the movie. We're also given the weakest exposition of all time with this opening party, which is, I mean, just an absolute mess of a scene. So I'm gonna do my best to break it down for you. Tristan. Tristan. Oh my god, drama! Okay, hold on. Let me just set this up real quick. Hold on, I got something cool today. This movie does such a bad job at explaining characters and relationships that I'm literally going to give you a visual guide to keep track. So these two are Tristan and Chloe. Something happened between them, but we're gonna have to wait to find out. So in the meantime, they're gonna go up here. Tristan! 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 Alexis. What's wrong? Not asshole! You stupid bitch! What did oh, he do? God. Doesn't understand do the definition of the word! No! Is this true? Look, man, I thought you were done fucking. I asked you a question. Oh my god. Kiss. Let's pause here for a moment though, folks, because you're probably wondering, hold on, hold on. Girl number two? This is Alexis, Tristan's ex-flame. Ex-flame from what? Cheating on Chloe. Then we got this guy, Hunter. He just assaulted Alexis, so obviously he's gonna be our villain. Because you were such a fucking dick, Hunter! Chloe. Why are you here? No one invited you. What'd you say, bitch? Fuck you, I said you're such a fucking dick. What'd you say? Oh. Oh, no, no, you're you're not serious. You can already tell the director thought this is gonna be like a huge deal with like fan shipping and stuff like that. Like, what, what was that TikTok ass chin grab? No, thank you. This already just feels like one of those role play TikToks where they're like, hey, is this guy bothering you? All right, so this is Zoe. She used to date Hunter, Hunter, but now Hunter is dating this girl, Jennifer, who doesn't say uh, a single word until the end of the movie. Isn't that fucking crazy? Anyway, here's a little bit of the scuffle that happens here. Uh, it's kind of the most accurate part of the movie. It is just as pathetic as a real house party fight. This brings everyone to the front lawn. And then Hunter, this guy, keep up. He's sort of like the alpha of this one boys group, right? Yeah, but for some reason he comes storming out of the house talking like a medieval king. That boy's weak. That boy's weak. Stop it. So the character choice is so far pretty bold with this one. Uh, never before have I seen a school bully who also wants to conquer foreign lands. I'm right here. Let's I'm get standing it. right here. Back. Fuck him up. Oh, he's taking the tops up. We're showing the guns. I got some. Look at that. The problem with the casting choice for Hunter is that it's stupid and dumb. I'm not scared of him. I I'm just confused by him. You know, I, I could see him playing this role in something like, uh, like the Minecraft movie, you know? Endermen are pretty scary, but he's not big. He's not he's not tough I feel like for an 80s teen movie. You got to go for the jock stereotypes. You know, this is this is like if you cast me in this movie 
Come on! Hey, actually, I think you guys should just stop that. I think if you stop that, that everyone would be a lot more happy and that we actually just stop fighting and stuff. Okay, the guy that just beat the shit out of Hunter is Jackson. He's kind of like the leader of the good guy group and he is dating Zoe. So we'll keep an eye on that because it, it gets confusing. And everyone kind of ends up fleeing from this, which means finally we've escaped the clutches of that god awful exposition. Where are you going? Home. It's late. My mom should be here any minute. We're not done talking. What's there to talk about? It is what it is. I don't know what to do. I can't believe this happened. You said that you... You know my parents... God, she is giving Shakespeare and he is giving penis. You know how that makes me feel, Tristan. Fact. No, Fact. no, you don't. Fact. So I don't know, guys. Ten minutes in, feel like we've already kind of watched the same scene twice here. Um, and even though we've already established good guys and bad guys, I can't really say that I like anyone yet. Riley, your friends are nuts. Yeah, tell me about it. Well, you should stop by later. Oh, yeah? Why is that? Just stop by. Maybe I will. Good. I'm not going to regret it. Ooh, oh, sorry, I know that's mean. I, I don't know. <laughs> so, I'm sorry, something about it. The guy here is Riley, okay? And then this is his girlfriend, Ashley. Uh, I don't know. I hesitate to say girlfriend. They They... I think they really just like to kiss. The last member of the Good Boys Club is this guy, Taylor. Uh, he's played by that TikTok guy, Carrington. <clears throat> oh. He is probably the most notable uh, in this entire cast, other than uh, Mitzi. So I'm glad they got their back, guys. No shame in the game. Look, no hate to the guy, uh, Carrington, but his character does not work at all in this movie. His line delivery in this scene is so funny. Are we going home? Yeah, we got something to discuss. What is it? I can't believe you didn't hit that fucker. You had all these people watching you and you just stood there like a fucking pussy? You just won state. I just don't know why you we just have fucking to. embarrassed yourself. I can't believe you're my. Bro, I'm fucking talking to you. I can't believe you're my fucking brother. Oh, ah, okay, they're brothers. All right, are we keeping track, folks? Mario and Luigi. Guys, look at these establishing shots. These are so 80s. Oh, look, a 2017 Jeep chair. The next scene in this movie is the only scene in the movie that I actually found to be pretty well done. Uh, the script is all right, but honestly, the acting really shines through here. So you're saying out of all the animals in the animal kingdom, I'd be a fucking raccoon? Yes. Uh. They're so cute. Airball. And they have little eyes and little hands, and they're very resourceful. Okay. Okay, and what, what would I be? You? Mm-hmm. A sewer rat. Fuck you! <laughs> also, this character is Julie. So here she goes on the rope of... Hmm. Uh, the rope of... Uh, love and quality time. Allow me to clear a couple things up though uh, while we're here. In the middle of this scene, uh, Julie very casually mentions that she has a little thing going on with Taylor. Uh, spoiler alert, they never explore that again. On top of that, apparently Zoe still has feelings for Hunter. But remember, Hunter is with Jennifer! But even though Zoe has these feelings for Hunter, she's out running side missions with Jackson? Also, didn't this whole thing happen because Hunter assaulted Alexis? Like, are we just gonna move on from that one? Guys, I wasn't kidding. It's a lot to follow. Oh, and by the way, uh, half of this stuff, they don't even outwardly explain in the movie. You have to figure it out yourself along the way. However, the most confusing part about all of this, the question on my mind is, why the fuck do so many people like Hunter? He is very clearly the worst person that all of these people know, yet he seems to have some sort of everlasting connection to all of them. Ah, uh, oh God, oh God, I'm so hungry. Oh, who's, who's, who's that at the door? Oh, no, don't hurt me, it's 
Factor, the sponsor for today's video. Eat stress-free this summer with Factor's delicious, ready-to-eat meals. Every fresh, never-frozen meal is chef-crafted, dietitian approved and ready-to-eat in just two minutes. Choose from a weekly menu of 35 options, including popular options like Calorie Smart, Keto, Protein Plus, or Vegan and Veggie. Guys, I'm gonna be honest, I hate grocery shopping. I, 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 I can't think hard enough, and anytime I go to the grocery store, I get to an aisle, and I, I just stand there. I just stand there for like an hour and then I go home. I don't even get groceries. Why not just avoid that altogether? Why not have some gourmet factor meals at home? Meals that feature premium ingredients like filet mignon, shrimp, truffle butter, broccolini, and asparagus. And if your life gets a little crazy like mine sometimes, you're able to change your factor meal plan from up to four to 18 meals a week. You can change or reschedule your delivery at any time. Get 50% off your first factor box and 20% off your next month of orders that is the next four boxes using my link click the link in the description or scan the qr code using your phone thank you factor now here's where the movie uh for me really just loses all of its purpose the guys squat up at jackson's house uh I i'm pretty sure it's jackson's house as i've figured out from watching the movie hey is that a smart fridge at this house they discuss their plans for the night uh and i don't know if it's just me but it sounds pretty similar to what they just did hey dickheads don't get too comfy. We leaving soon. Oh, so we're going to Ashley's place? I think she wants to come over. First, we're going to Swami's. Why? To do what to you didn't do. To beat the shit out of Hunter. What? So let's get this straight. They went to a party, beat the shit out of Hunter for being an asshole, left, and now they want to beat the shit out of Hunter for being an asshole. So basically they just want to say bet and double down, which is honestly kind of hard, but it sort of just turns them into anti-heroes. I don't know, this this has all just become completely unnecessary. When Riley ends up disagreeing with the plans, we get another one of those highly uncomfortable moments where the actors think that they're in a TikTok edit. We're doing it. Cool, I'm not going. You're going. <laughs> Guys, wait, check this out. Check out this Sigma edit that I made for Jackson. Sorry, but I'm number one. Right, doesn't it feel like this is exactly what the director wanted? I, I see his vision. He doesn't. Well, Tristan tells Taylor that going through with this is a bad idea because if they beat up Hunter again, this time he's literally gonna shoot them. So what? We beat him up? Huh? Then what? He'll show up to school and fucking shoot us. You shouldn't have backed down. Once you show fear, you show fear for the rest of your life. Oh, facts, kiss. This isn't a good idea. Don't you fucking understand that? I think you don't fucking understand. That always taught us to respect women and protect those who can't protect themselves. Oh, yeah, ladies. Let. Lady. It all just feels like one big TikTok, doesn't it? You know, so much pandering, so much mewing. Being the only two in the group with some bit of sense, Riley and Tristan chat about how this is still a really bad idea. In this conversation, Riley decides to tell this story about a sleepover at Hunter's when they were kids. Uh, apparently Hunter's dad, sorry, I don't mean to laugh, it's just crazy. Apparently Hunter's dad backhanded him so hard that Riley thought he was dead. Casual mention. It's all supposed to be this big anecdotal thing about like Hunter's resilience and his unwillingness to back down, but it, it, that's kind of confusing because it feels like they're kind of trying to make us feel bad for him. Regardless, the slightly less good boys show back up and once again, they argue. Starting to feel familiar, folks. I was so fucking close to shooting Jackson tonight. Who the fuck are you? Well, I guess Tristan was not bluffing about the shooting. Uh, <laughs> this is turning into some real shit. Okay, guys, this scene introduces us to our final characters that we have to introduce ourselves to. Joshua and Anthony. Uh, we learn pretty much nothing about them other than their relationship to Hunter and their relationship to each other. So... We can just put them up over here, isn't that great? Anyway, Hunter's still in this Lisan al gaib esque state of mind, or honestly, state of being. I didn't even realize at first how much he looks like Timothy Chalamet. I'll let you cap a motherfucker. Damn right I would. Shut the fuck up! 
You and I both know you couldn't pull that trigger even if you wanted to. You're a coward. Fucking coward. But that backfires because then he just starts getting flamed by his boys for getting his ass beat by Jackson. But get this though, it's okay because Jackson wasn't even his original target. He wanted Tristan. Yeah, well, Jackson did take it to you. Like I said, lucky. Yeah, sure he was. The fuck are you saying to me? The fuck are you saying to me, Anthony? Get up! You wanna go? Does anyone in this movie like each other? Probably not, but clearly that's not important because all you need to know right now are two things. Number one, they know where the good boys are gonna be tonight. Number two, they're probably gonna try to kill Tristan. By the way, we still have no motive for Hunter's hatred of Tristan other than- Always get involved in shit you shouldn't be involved in. So once again, here we are, 30 minutes in. Useless plot. The stakes are so manufactured and just unnecessary. It's clear that they wanted this to be like a, an outsider's West Side Story, even like Outer Banks gang kind of vibe, but it just like is not warranted at all with this storyline. In fact, if you were to make this a gang story, it would probably make all of the beats in the film feel 10 times more warranted. It kind of feels like a missed opportunity. Hey, yo, we're sucking each other off and hurry up. Oh. Just turn back. Hurry up! Turn back. I don't think we have a choice. Okay, so we're pretty much just walking around right now. It's really awkward. They try to show two conversations back to back, but the editing is super messy and some of the audio is jumbled. There's a finally a coherent conversation at the end here. Oh, we should just like just fuck them in the ass with like a frozen hot dog or like wild as hell, bro. Mm -hmm. I don't know what to do. It's the one thing my father told me never to do. Don't ever get a girl pregnant if you're not ready to face the consequences. Oh shit! Reminder folks, Tristan, okay, dated Chloe and cheated on her with Alexis and then went back to Chloe and now Chloe's pregnant? Now we're starting to feel a little bit like euphoria, okay guys? It's just more high schoolers having sex and shit. Um, it's, I, I don't get it. It's, it's like the millennial writer's vice. We're good, thanks. Well, then Riley and Jackson get into their third argument so far. It's like the climax of every scene at this point. And when that's over, Tristan and Taylor get into another argument. And guys, we're getting pretty close to a solid 40 minutes of arguing here. For you? When you're around Jackson, it's like you're a different person. You take on his fuck everything persona. It's bullshit, man. Total bullshit. I mean, you just said we could fuck him with a hot dog? Really? Whoa, wait a second. How the hell would you know that? You were standing 30 yards away having a separate conversation with Riley that whole time. Continuity error. <sighs> fuck, bro. I think they were here. Bro, the fire's still fucking lit. Oh. God damn! Uh, yeah, pretty decent fight scene here. Uh, there's a little suspenseful moment where Hunter almost gets Tristan, but Taylor comes in for the save. After they get away, though, they show my favorite sequence in the film, which is just this long shot of them running up a staircase, but they show the whole thing. we're just chilling outside of a restaurant. I think you know how this is gonna go. Tristan just starts lamenting, saying that he wishes Hunter just shot him. Then he casually mentions that he didn't even want to have sex with Chloe. That's, that's a little concerning. I didn't even really want to have sex. Bro, just let it out. Fuck you, Jackson. Oh boy, here we go. Okay, he's not wrong. That is like a crazy fast switch up of Jackson uh, for literally no reason, but we're like halfway through this thing and I'm dying for these kids to just find some common ground. As if it wasn't bad enough that I find out tonight that my girlfriend is late. Wait. You dragged me out here and almost give me shit. So she, 
So we don't even know we don't even know if she's pregnant. Well, I mean that changes things a little bit. Like we we don't have to lose our marbles yet. But hey, hey, you know what? I suppose it's good that they uh that they're taking it seriously. The rest of the scene is just Tristan crying and Jackson apologizing for everything. So that actually kind of rocks. I, I was just asking for this. Now here's the wild part. Uh, once everyone's done crying about Tristan maybe getting his girlfriend pregnant. Um, they immediately start joking about Riley having sex with his girlfriend later tonight. I don't have enough energy to sleep with her. <laughs> you don't need a lot of energy, girl. I give you about like two pumps and you're done. Yeah. That's good. <laughs> no, I'm fine with that. Yeah, that's good. Is that one more than you gave Zoya? <laughs> I'll give you that one. Oof, <laughs> God. Oh, that was. Ugh, don't make me watch that again. You know what though? It is reassuring for me, at least in terms of these guys' real life personalities. You know, at least we know that they would never actually have a conversation like this in real life. But let's move on from this scene, shall we? Because we got some walking to do. And after that, we're gonna plant ourselves down in an almost identical location. Look at this. You can order online from this 80s wine store. Look, all right, look. I can understand a few slip ups, but I mean, this is just inexcusable at this point, right? They're, they're not even trying. Now, this conversation has a great opening. Jackson opens the floor by saying, hey, Tristan, hey, you know, if it makes you feel any better, I almost got my girlfriend pregnant once, too. I'm going to be honest with you, bro. Zoe was late about like two months ago. Yeah, bro. Well, thank God, man, I'm feeling so much better. God, in fact, let me throw these condoms away. I, I don't need them. Folks, I have a feeling this scene was a Band-Aid scene because we're getting pretty close to the end of the movie and I still feel like I don't know shit about these characters. So I kid you not, this scene is just each character going around in a circle and revealing as much backstory as they can. Uh, so let's, uh, let's refer to the, fuck, uh, what are we calling it? The, uh, you know what? Let's just call it the rope. Let's start with Jackson. He reveals that the reason he hates bullies so much is that he was a foster kid. And in the first home he got placed at, the biological child hated him so much that he managed to frame him to the point of Jackson getting sent back. Actually really sad. That's some decent backstory writing. <laughs> Quick question though. Uh, how, are, how are you telling your longtime friends about this for the first time? Like, I don't know, doesn't that feel like a pretty important detail of your life to leave out? Taylor and Tristan don't really give much backstory. We really don't know much about them at all. Tristan just kind of lets us know that people around these parts like to curb stomp other folks. The only other thing that we learn about their past life is that when they lived in Nebraska, they used to do this thing where they would sneak out and quote, find a girl to pop a titty. Hey, you remember we used to sneak out in Nebraska and go walk around trying to find some girl pop a titty? <laughs> Yeah, we put in some pretty serious mileage. And besides that being a wildly specific activity, I mean, how the fuck old are these kids supposed to be, man? We're meant to think they're in high school. How, how supposedly old were they years ago in Nebraska when they were going on areola adventures in the middle of the night? Anyway, Riley's story is kind of just a piggyback off of that one. Uh, apparently, he snuck out to meet a girl one time. Ooh. That's the gist of it all, pretty much. Uh, honestly, it doesn't really do much for me as a scene. I, I feel like really the only effective moment there was Jackson's backstory. You know, I, I feel like I do understand him a little bit more now what would we do <laughs> yeah. we have options. do we can't ask her to get abortion i mean do i even have that right to ask her so cool that my i don't even know if i believe in that anyways I get that i mean i think you have a say but ultimately it's up to her so you just gotta respect that yeah i know all right, good talk, guys. Also, am I absolutely insane, or did he not just question his own stance on abortion? He was like, I don't even know if I believe in that anymore. Is that what he was saying? Let me know. Folks, for the last hour of this movie, we've had an absolute blast watching these guys do nothing but walk, run, talk, and sit, but it's finally time for them to split up for the evening and get to their fair maidens. Because, oh, uh, by the way, they're off the fighting thing now. They, they, they don't give a fuck about those guys. Speaking of those guys, they're at Jackson's house taking a piss in the garage. And for some reason, Zoe and Julie are there and they see it. 
Once again, just like a weird, convenient moment. It's about to start getting confusing again. Uh, d don't worry, we, we have the rope. Tristan and Riley have broken off together. Uh, they're on the way to see Riley's lady, but on the way, Tristan, who has now found peace with his potential pregnancy, decides it's time to turn into a sex guru. My brother told me something I should listen to. When I asked him to buy me condoms, he looked at me and said, if you're not responsible enough to buy condoms, then you're not responsible enough to have sex. Yes, brother. Yes. You cannot. No, don't add, say that. You cannot um, say that. That is so embarrassing. Is, is, is Hunter coming? Yeah, why? Why? Well, how would you invite why him over? Not? Why not? He just assaulted Alexis. Okay, calm down. You don't know that. Wow. Well, there you go, folks. The first thing we get to learn about Jennifer is uh, that she's a compulsive victim blamer. That's absolutely insane. Uh, to refer to the rope once more, the only two characters we really need to be following right now are Jennifer and Ashley. The other girls are kind of just um, like filler characters. So yeah, there you go. Perhaps they should be more than that though, because pardon me for saying this, Jennifer is a dummy. All they want is for her to break up with Hunter due to his clear red flags and she won't do it. Anyone know anyone like that in real life? It, it tale is all this time, folks. All right, so once Tristan and Riley show up, okay, Tristan goes with Jennifer to use the phone. Tristan and Jennifer. Riley and Ashley, uh, they enter the bone zone. They're pretty insignificant for the rest of the movie. We're done with them. That's awesome. Meanwhile, these fuckheads, they're just strolling through Jackson's big ass house in the middle of the night. Like, where are his parents? What's the privacy with that picture? Seriously, she's getting awkward as fuck, bro. <laughs> just thinking. About what? Why is she with Jackson? Oh my God, who frames a photo like that, man? That is, that is so odd. Now remember also at Jackson's house are Zoe and Julie who get pulled up on by Alexis, who honestly just seems to show up anytime that they need to move the plot forward quickly. Then our other boys show up and when they see Hunter's pee pee on the ground, they flip out and storm off to Ashley. So now we finally have everyone heading to the same location. Jackson your storyline is done. Jennifer's storyline definitely done. Julie, done. Tristan uses the phone to call Chloe so that they can meet up at their usual spot that I guess they have. Right as Tristan leaves though, the bad boys show up to squeeze his whereabouts out of the girls. And then we reach our climactic ending scene. You're probably wondering how it's all gonna go down. Maybe. Maybe not. Honestly, at this point, I was just waiting for the movie to be over. So thank God that the following events take place in the last five minutes of the movie. The boys all end up running into each other, putting us into this big chase where shockingly, Hunter ends up getting hit by a car. Is he dead? We never find out. But he's, uh, he's done now. Surprise, Tristan. I'm surprised. Let's go. Hey man, what the fuck? What the fuck are you doing? Joshua! Fucking Hunter. Joshua! Fucking Hunter. Think, think about this! Come on, please! You think I'm a fucking pussy? Don't do- I'm no. not a fucking pussy! Why did he do that? I cannot think of a more unmotivated and useless ending. Literally, what was the point of that? I mean, I mean, the guy literally has maybe 15 lines in the whole movie. Yeah, so this ending sucks like really, really bad. And it's actually left open-ended. We don't actually know if he dies or not, but uh, truly, I cannot believe that that just happened. I mean, talk about an actual waste of an hour and a half. I, I know I say that to exaggerate sometimes, but oh my God. Well, folks, how did you like that? How did you... Uh, well, I hope you enjoyed it a lot because actually I still have one more thing to show you. It's something that I've actually been meaning to show you for a long time. So here it comes. Um, uh, what is this animal doing here? I've been meaning to do this thing for a while now. Um, and that is give an art tour um, of some of the art that I purchased from my subscribers uh, and have hung up around my home in my office. Yes, you can see the love, you can feel the love. Hi! Gooey, gooey. Well, this one is, uh, this one's from Hannah and I'm gonna put Hannah's information on the screen um, if you're interested in, in more of Hannah's art. All right, <laughs> I guess, I guess that's it, right? I like this one. Okay, this one is, this one is a beat of mystery house. This one's by Eli. 
Um, I'll also put uh, the, 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 the um, what's the word I'm looking for? Handles below. This one is really cool and special to me. Uh, Eli is actually a New Orleans artist and uh, I'm from New Orleans, so I, I thought that was really cool. All right, you guys know I love dinosaurs. So Aubrey sent me a print of a dinosaur. How cool is that? I love the black and white. I love how it's uh, either, you know, maybe it's breaking its neck, maybe it's yelling, maybe it's roaring. Dinosaurs. Thank you, thank you. Here are the hashtags, here are the bios, here are the MySpace. Okay, next, um, this one here. Now this one, this one's rather profound, isn't it? V rather profound, right? But this one is from Jackson. I was originally going to receive a print of this one um, because uh, the original was damaged, but then uh, the artist got back to me and ended up having the original. This one is by Lily, okay? Lily, um, I I think it's it, it's awesome. It's it's it really suits the top of the room. It really makes the room feel bigger. It's also, I mean, what a captivating piece. I mean, the design is beautiful. Design is beautiful. The art is beautiful. Folks, you don't get to see this one often because uh, it's on this side of the room. This is a capybara. Room side. So I see what side of the room Oh, okay. So this is a capybara with a grenade on its head, um, and. Yeah, like that. So I, I, I like that a lot. I like this one a lot. This is by Dom. Uh, uh, Dom has a website, I believe. So you should go to Dom's website and check out all the stuff that they have to offer. Now it's time to shout out some friends. These skull pieces were done by my friend, Charlie. 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 This one's a new piece that we have in here. This one is by our friend, Katie. Everyone say, thank you, Katie. And Katie's information is also on the screen right now. What do you think of this one? What do you think? If you want to send me more of your art, do it because I still have more of this wall to uh, fill. And I'd love to support some uh, some more artists. So um, yeah, I think that's uh, I think that's it. This movie had potential, I think. I think they really could have done something with it if they if they just tweaked it a little bit more. You know, you know, uh, th there was something there. If you enjoyed this video, please be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and comment about who your favorite character in the movie was. Who do you actually think gave the best performance in this movie? That being said, that is all I have for you this time. But until next time, um, great. I kind of just wanted this final moment to breathe for a second and be like, oh, I'm done. Okay, bye.